welcome back. It is another episode of Five Things Season 3. And on this episode, we are talking about five camp horror films that you should watch. And we have some special guests with us. You may have seen them a couple weeks ago on the interview preview show for this. But let's go ahead and start diving into our episode. So with me today is our special guest host from the Danny Vega show. It is Danny V. What up? All right. And now to introduce our guest, it is the man that is directing the film Friday the 13th and Vengeance Bloodlines 2. It is the man behind the mask in that film. And in the first part, it is Jason Brooks. And then it is the man behind the mask in Friday the 13th Part 6. And who is playing Jason's father in these two films. And that is C.J. Graham. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so before we dive into our list here... Jason, yes. do you want to plug anything? Yeah, um, right now, if you guys want to go check out uh, Friday 13, Vengeance 2, Bloodlines, uh, the Indiegogo is live. You can pick up a DVD, Blu-ray, mask, machetes, all kinds of things. Um, Indiegogo.com, look up Friday 13, Vengeance 2, Bloodlines, or just go to YouTube and watch the trailer. Go look that up. So, yep. Links will be in the description. CJ, anything that you want to plug? I don't talk. it's just me cj graham i'm not i'm not long for the ride this time i'm not in charge of anything i'm just going with the flow all right quick question that any connections that people can see you at this summer i'll be down in uh, san antonio and then the end of next month i'll be in houston and then it just kind of goes after that uh all over the board it starts getting extremely busy all right if you haven't met C.J. Graham before, definitely go check him out. He is definitely one of the nicest guys to meet. Absolutely. Now, how this list works is we go round robin style. This is a special episode. We have four people on it. The first time we're ever doing that. So we're going to start. Usually we start with a guest, but we have two guests here. And we're going to start with the director himself. Jason, what is your number five? My number five, I'm going to go with uh, Cabin Fever. Karen, I'm sorry. We just don't want to get it. Karen, we're going to get help now. Oh. Ca- Cabin Fever is a good one. I will have that more on the bottom of my list. Uh, I-, I remember watching that vividly and going, like, what the hell? It, it just It's one of those movies that keep you trapped and you're trying to figure it out through the entire movie. And I think movies like that for me uh, really hit it home because it's one of those, like, I'm, I'm deep. I'm very deep in there. Like, okay, is it ghost? Is it this? Is it that? You know? And it's, it's always one of those, uh, how do you say it? Psychological movies that keep me intrigued. So that was, that was a really good one. Yeah. That movie was definitely a fun movie to watch. Very graphic. I think it kind of was a little different for its time when it first came out. No, I, I've not seen that. You know, the interesting thing about the question is that there are hundreds of films that are done at a camp. Murders, you know, suspense, all that. Um, They have camps now where people go just to watch horror movies and spend the weekend. So it's really, it's grown dramatically. It's not just more of a question anymore. It's, it really has become an iconic image of people going to camps just to watch scary movies and be scared. Yeah, yeah, I wish they did that around here. It'd be fun to d- join in. CJ, what do you got at number five? You know, I, I it's kind of a hard question for me, and I'll tell you why. Because the films that I always watch, that every one of them is a, is done in the summer. They're always done at a camp. They're always done with kids, and I think they're all uh, 
done with the same platform as a Friday the 13th at the end of the day, going back to 1980. And I think everybody going forward is picked on those. Um, I really don't know if I'm going to put a, a, a ticket on that, to be honest. And the reason for that is I don't downplay any of them. The ones I do watch, they're just, I get lucky to see them more importantly. I see a lot of the people at the conventions and that really makes me go back and take a look at them. So it's really difficult for me to put one. I mean, you know, you start watching some of the people in them and then you realize how many people have been in a summer camp film that are A-listers. And it's quite, it's actually magnificent and they're very quiet about it. Yeah. My number five is the movie Wrong Turn. Is that a summer movie? I didn't think it was a summer movie. I didn't think so, too. But actually, you know, Elijah Dushku and the crew, they were actually going out on a backpacking trip. Oh. So and then they get they get into the car accident and then they end up in the woods and being hunted by the, the, you know, the inbred mutants. Now, that's well, a funny thing. You know, it's funny to say that because, you know, not to change the subject or the question there, I would start thinking of a swamp thing. Swamp Thing's a good one. Yeah. You know, I started, it made me think because, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Derek Mears, who played Jason in 09, uh, they did a series for a year. Unfortunately, it wasn't picked up, uh, but I watched it. It was, it was again, it was, a, it was a camp thing at the end of the day. At four, I got a sleepaway camp. Oh, good one. Very good one. Still haven't seen it. Melissa uh, Rose, no. Oh. <laughs> You gotta watch that one. You gotta let us know what you think about it. Lots I of know, uh, me. <laughs> Definitely one of the most intense endings in a film ever. I didn't see it when I was a kid. I actually saw it when I was at adult with my wife. And the end, just both of our mouths dropped. It's like, what the hell just happened? So great ending. It's campy because it's the 80s and the way it was filmed, but it's an excellent film. You know, I'm gonna give a ditto over there, Jason, because that film we talked about before we started shooting. Um, a lot of these people we see on the circuit, and you just said it, 80s. All right, CJ, you got anything at four to throw in there? No, I'm, I'm going to leave it neutral. <laughs> <laughs> I better answer questions like this because the event will bite you because this this stuff, Jason doesn't know this yet because he's a young man. This stuff never goes away. So he's going to want to get an actress or actor one day, and they're going to say, well, you didn't like my movie, and you oh, said this yeah. <laughs> I know this already. Right now, from experience, <laughs> everything was beautiful. Yes. <laughs> well, that's yeah. fair enough. So I, I say we're we'll, we'll going forward. We'll we'll get CJ's feedback on our picks. So this way, we don't put him in any hot water with any people that he sees on the con circuit. Yeah, Ooh. these are in no particular order. You said right, so no particular order. Oh, no. See how he's backing up now. See how he's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I'm learning, see, CJ. Well, this is how it is, guys. My name is C.J. Graham, and I approve this message. So, Dan, what's your number four, I guess? It's it's another one that's a, more of a psychological thriller that, like, had me in was Cabin in the Woods. Cabin what? in the Woods, excellent film. Uh, love the ending to it. Love how it pays homage to all of the horror films that are out there. It's Very so nice. different than every other horror film. Yes. Yep. It had a different that, villain, in a way, that you know, just, I don't know. It was cool. I liked it. Yeah. No, no, I agree. That's, that's why I said, like, it was one of those movies. Again, I'm trying to figure it out. And then, like you said, that ending, I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, all right, well, there we go. I like it. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I have to be, I have to be invested. Like, uh, I like old school horror versus like new school horror. And uh, so for me to be invested and not having the old school horror mindset, you know, because I'm, I'm kind of like one of those super fans that are just like, hey, if it's not following this classic stuff, you know, I don't like it. So when you have psychological thrillers that you have me invested, those are the ones that I'm like, all right, cool. You know, it's not like the classics, but it was a great movie. I like it. We have a winner. It's the Buckners, ladies and gentlemen. The Buckners pull the W. The Blair Witch Project. Oh, that one's on my list. Yeah, an example of a film that you know there was really low budget and made millions. 
first viral campaign, if you really think about it, in the way they used MTV to promote it. First time I watched it, everybody left silent, and they were all talking about it afterwards. And we went a few days afterwards. It's like, let's stay through the end of the credits. And I was like, son of a bitch, it's fake. Co-worker at the time, and uh, I was working at Amazon, and she's she was into film, and she's like, oh, yeah, one of my friends are making this movie called Blair Witch Project. No it's way. like a found footage thing. You know what that is? I'm like, no. What? What? There was no found footage at the time. And she told me all about it. And it's like, yeah, they're setting it up. They got this website. She showed me. She was helping with it. So everything was spoiled for me before I even saw the film. And then oh. I it came out and I watched it. And I was, uh, so I knew the whole time it was fake. And I didn't have that experience that everyone else did. So it kind of like fell flat for me. Oh. For number three, I've got Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead, is, Evil yeah, Dead is my number three. I didn't think about that. E Evil Dead is my number three. So, so yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're right there. There we go. Nice. No, it didn't even it didn't even categorize me as a camp a day camp killing movie, to be honest. I mean it is, I guess, but I guess you can almost put anything in there anymore. I mean, killing is You're killing. The they all happen. I, I remember Frankenstein being on the edge of the water back in uh 1966. So I guess that was a, a camp killer too, right? <laughs> old black and white. No, it's true. Oh, the old black and white. He was on the riverbed yeah. with a little girl, you know. And I'm thinking, well, I guess that's a, that's water camp. Yeah, I, perception is reality, right? Yeah, they're in a cabin in Evil Dead. Yep, oh. camping in the cabin. Good, good old yep. Sam Raimi. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually a good point. I, I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. I think that right. so, sometimes you start thinking about things outside the box rather than being so, you know, perceived that it's going to be only certain camps and daytime, as somebody yeah. said. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? yeah. So <laughs> it's a pretty big Pandora's box. My number three, uh, keeping up with those shocking endings, we have to go OG Friday the 13th. About the two kids murdered in 58. Huh? Boyd Browning in 57. A bunch of fires. Nobody knows who did any of them. Quit. At three, Dave. How dare you? There is two <laughs> movies in front of this that are have are more shocking, and one of them is more based in reality than all the films that we're going to talk about, which is absolutely terrifying. That that'll be my number two when we get to it. It cuts so deep, Dave. When I get cut off, it's not personal, just so you know. <laughs> cut me deep, Dave. Cut me deep right here. I, I love that film. It's a great film. I love the ending. I I love the whole Pamela Voorhees, spoiler alert, reveal at the end. I love the hidden face and the mystery of it leading up to it. Just, it's just great. Just love that film. Jason's got some twists and turns for you in parts two, so watch out. Ooh, nice. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. Got, uh, I had Cabin in the Woods at number two. Yeah, you know they're all connected. Cabin in the Woods. Sleep Camp. They're all right turn. You know, they all have similarities. And again, I, I use it as a platform. You go back and start looking at the the original horrors back in the 1980s, the connectivity just keeps going through. There, Somebody takes it and fine-tunes it, tweets it, or answers questions that the fans wanted to know but never got an answer. Yeah. Two, because of the impact of when it came out. You know, I was really young when it came out, is the Blair Witch Project. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. <laughs> was my number two. Because that messed with me in my head. <laughs> as yeah. you know, like, as as a young boy, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, you see this and I um, unfortunately, Jason, you got it ruined for you, but you know, 
be being in the young younger demographic watching this, you're like, did that really happen? And you were just like freaking out. Like, I don't want to go in the woods. Come on. aunt lives in the springs which is in the middle of the woods because it used to be if i'm not mistaken um uh a national park so like we're out in the middle of the woods watching this and i'm like wait it's really dark outside you know so <laughs> just the impact of the blair witch project and also you know uh being low budget as it was i think is one of the most phenomenal things now that i'm older to happen because you know as a filmmaker yourself to make something beautiful out of like a low budget and no one bails on you and stuff like that it, it's just on another level it just hits home you know so mm -hmm. it's my number two yeah it's a good number two a very good number two I'll, I'll tell you this it's something that the sequels haven't ruined Oh, no. It's it's kind of like what they're doing a lot of the horror movies now is they try to retell the entire story and it just doesn't work. Well, it's hard mm. to come back from that after it's a found footage film and everyone knows it's not real. It's like yeah. you know you got you got your work cut out for you on the sequel for that. So So my number two, so this is why Friday the 13th is at three. And this number two here, I don't know if you've seen it. It is Eden Lake. But this is about a young couple that they go, they go camping and are camping by a lake in a tent. So they encounter a bunch of teens and this Rottweiler that kind of torments them. It, it's intense. It's uh, suspenseful because these teens are absolute assholes and you want all of them to die with the way they're tormenting the couple. Um, I think Michael Fassbender is in it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent movie. It has some twists and turns in it and it's just nonstop action once it picks up. I, I remember watching that one and I feel like I didn't know what to expect. But I feel like it was a little bit slow and artsy for me at parts. Uh -huh. but, uh, but yeah, it was pretty good. It was different again, which is always kind of hard to do when you're trying to, you know, repeat certain patterns and formulas. But yeah. There is a cool Easter egg in this film before the Easter eggs really became a big thing. But, you know, while this woman's being stalked, she comes along to like an outhouse or a cabin or something like that and it has a mirror and she and it carved into the mirror which she doesn't recognize and you can't really tell it says the most dangerous thing in the woods and then she looks into the mirror so oh. i thought that was a clever easter egg in it oh yeah that's cool but hey dave as soon as you said rottweiler i was like cujo was a camp film <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, Friday the 13th Part 6. I'm really under the impression there was only a Part 6. Um, <laughs> it started in Part 6, and the franchise was over with Part 6. I, I didn't realize <laughs> that there was before and afters. It was my second Friday. I watched the first one, um, the first Friday the 13th, when uh, I was maybe 12. I rented it from the library because uh, I've been hearing about Jason. I didn't know. I grew up in a very sheltered household, not with horror movies. But I kept hearing about this Jason Voorhees every Friday the thirteenth getting teased and wanted to figure it out one day. So I rented Friday the 13th and was a little disappointed. My goal was to find out who Jason Voorhees was. And then <laughs> the reason, I'm like, what? What's going on? So then the next one they had available was part six. Uh, the next one went. So I watched that and um and, and fell in love with that. I love the humor. Um and uh the way that Tom McLaughlin approached it and and did it. So um in the summer camp, I went to summer camp every, every, uh, every year. I was a Boy Scout, and I was I'm an Eagle Scout, and um, I, every summer going to summer camp. So I related to that as well, and that was that's why it made my number one. It's go. a good number one. It's a, it's I think it's it's really unique how it's done that that film right because it has that James Bond opening which is fun. Yeah. It has the you know the face through the RV. 
it has just a lot of really cool things that weren't in any of the other films. I think it just kind of stands out. And it's, you know, it made number one on our other guest host list during Halloween time, where it's like, hey, these are the five films that you should introduce to your family. And that was his number one pick, too. So that is just a, a, a great pick. And you already know. You already know. I, it has to be every single Friday the 13th franchises <laughs> ever. Okay? Every single movie. Uh, that's my number one. And like I said, like I explained it before, it's it's you never forget your first, man. And that was the first horror uh, movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. Like I said, I freaked everything else freaked me the hell out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I really didn't get into Freddy Krueger until later. You know that was introduced, and then when I saw Freddy, I was like, ah! you know. <laughs> but for some reason, Jason, I just I fell in love with it, man. Um, the whole thing. The whole thing with Jason's mom and channeling Jason through her body in the first movie um, to the third movie when you first see the hockey mask. Because in the second movie, he wore a bag, I think, right? Yep. And then, yeah. And then so third movie, Jason 3D, you know? And it, it was funny. I was watching I was watching that movie, I think, in my grandmother's house. I think it was like in the fifth grade. And it, obviously, TVs weren't 3D back then, but, you know, it was shot and filmed for the theater yep. in 3D. So I was like, this movie's filled weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, all the way up to, uh, I loved, I loved Jason. Uh, one of my favorite Jasons uh, was Jason 5. And then Jason 6, like I said, the, the resurrection scene is iconic, man. It's so, it's so iconic that it's in a video game. It's in Mortal Kombat, you know? It's, it's just so iconic that he comes back as a Revenant because the lightning bolt hits him. But when the sixth one, when he comes, it, it, it really, how do you say it, put the nail in the coffin of our greatest fears that Jason was immortal. Now he really is immortal, you know? Yep. So I think that one was incredible. And then obviously it got silly as it along the way. And then mm -hmm. uh, before before Jason X, uh, before Jason X, uh, Jason 9 became one of my favorites because I like the whole concept that anyone can be Jason. You know, when everyone was eating the heart and then the spirit of Jason was channeled inside, you know, their body. So, yeah, you, you just never forget where it started to where it went. And I loved every single one of them as campy as they got. Number one, we kind of talked about it a little already. It's Sleepaway Camp. Sleepaway Camp is the number one for me because... As an adult, seeing that movie almost left me scarred because it is probably one of the best twist endings to a film. I don't know how I would have dealt with that when I saw it as a kid. I probably was like, what the hell is that when I had to figure it out? But yeah, I, the campiness is fun. You know, it mm. still seems like the 80s rule in one form or another. And going back to 1980 with the original Jason uh, set in a camp, it seems that everybody picked that up and it's just carried over for hundreds of films over the four decades since Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, the original one, and Sleepaway Camp, probably the two best twists at the end, ever. And the camp, Sleepaway Camp, has a great, great following. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that is our list. Do you agree with what we have on our list? What's on your five list of camp horror movies that people should check out? Leave that in the comments and let us know what you think. And don't forget, right? You have to go over on YouTube, find the Friday the 13th Vengeance Bloodlines Part 1, watch that, watch the trailer, then go over to the Indigo campaign and then contribute to that. Get your copies at least to something so that you have that in your own collection. Uh, but I don't want to plug it. Jason, you go ahead and plug it. Oh, you did a good job. Um, yeah, the YouTube channel is Real Fiction Studios. Um, you can search for the F uh friday the 13th vengeance to bloodlines trailer go check that out um so far everyone's really digging it um and then we have the indiegogo you could also just go straight to indiegogo look up friday the 13th vengeance to bloodlines you'll find the trailer there you'll see the indiegogo where you can pick up the blu-ray the dvd the masks that you're talking about posters machetes all different kinds of uh perks you know and, and it, you know one thing you're going to find all these cameos in it and there are a lot of cameos uh, be it a Halloween or uh, Friday the franchise or other films, 
the nice thing about it is everybody came together. It's been a decade, a little over a decade since 09 came out. And for everybody to participate um, just as a B12 shot in the arm to the franchise, and I think more just as a respect that we all got a great opportunity to play a role that we all had no idea three or four decades later there'd still be such a large demand. And there's some great films out there in the last decade. They're great. They're still great today. But I guess the real question would be, will they be as fortunate as we have that three and four decades later, we're still talking about it? Danny, what do you got going on on your channel? There's, there's so much going on, man. Um, obviously, everyone knows I do my film reviews. Um, I, I still have to do my everything everywhere all at once. Just new things keep popping up that I have to do. Like, I just did my heel uh, review of Obi-Wan Kenobi, <laughs> and uh, I did a couple of others. That's this episode of Five Things. Be sure to like this video so we expand the audience of that's watching it. So not only do we get more views here, but you get to see the spotlight on independent filmmakers, independent actors, actresses, comic book artists. We have interviews over on Donna Jean's show. Go check that out. We talk about indie news and mainstream news on the popcorn confessional and then there's five things so make sure you like this so that we can continue to shine the spotlight on all our independent friends out there making films um especially like friday 13th we're not getting it on the big screens so we have people like jason and cj graham giving us what we want and sometimes a lot better than what we got before so jason and cj thank you for participating in this interview and we'll talk to you soon